Let's get into a little bit of recap of the action of UFC Long Island. So, AJ, my man, this is actually something that I need to make note of. This, I don't think has ever happened before here, AJ, but folks, sometimes we say, listen, this, this counts, right? We have different picks, we have different methodologies, different over-unders, different everything. But if you look at the scoreboard, there was no winner at all. Nobody won in any given circumstance, any segment of the fight. Nobody won. Three and three money line a piece for me and AJ. Two and four for the prop bets a piece for me and AJ. Four and two on the over unders a piece for me and AJ. So at the end of the day, um, it's almost like this event never happened. You know what I mean? In terms of our record keeping, in terms of our scoreboard, but we do need to talk about it. Let's talk about what we got right and what we got wrong. AJ, I'm sure after three in a row of in the red, of wrong picks, he was probably slightly concerned, my man. Talk to me. How are the emotions feeling there? Bro, three, <laughs> I'm going off 0 oh, and 3 to start, bro. I was, I was uh, very stressed out, especially after that Shane Burgos um, and Charles Jordan fight. I was like, man, they robbed me. That was mine. Like, I was so worried just about, you know, this little competition we got going on, yeah. brother. So I was yeah. a little concerned about the whole thing. And then the match, Chanel Sumedari, you can't be mad at that fight. No, like the no. fact that I lost that one, I was like, all right, bro, that's that. We all win with that kind of fight. Absolutely. But it came back, man. Like you said all three and three. It was kind of a little bit of a wash for the week. Yeah. But that, that's what I'm saying. Where it added more to that, like it felt fully cosmic, justified. Like there was there was a lot of stuff going on. So the fact that I went 0 for three and then came back and won the last three, I, you know, it, it is what it is. But like you said, Derek, I was a little stressed going through those first three fights. Yeah. So if you look at it, uh, a J. He hits on Yair Rodriguez. TKO prop, too. My man got it. Now, should it have been a submission? Maybe, but ah, TKO prop. We'll give it to him. Amanda Lemos and Lee Jing Liang. We hit on that underdog pick we were trying to tell you guys all last week. So that's the three. Miss on the Suma Derji, Charles Jordan, and Misha Tate. Now, as for me, mine was a little touch and go. It was miss, win, miss, win, miss, right? So I missed on Misha Tate, missed on Suma Derji, of course. And then, of course, Brian Ortega with that very anticlimactic main event. But we hit on Shane Burgos, we hit on Lee Jing Liang, and we hit on Amanda Lemos. So that moves the total, folks, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, 85 and 48 for me, 86 and 47 for AJ. So nothing has changed more or less in our race, but it's okay. It's still a one point differential, one fight differential. But let's talk about some props. Two and four a pop, man. We both hit on the Jing Liang TKO at plus 350. Now, AJ, I kind of feel like that was easy money in terms of steal. It's like stealing candy from a baby. Plus 350 for the leech who has, what, half of his wins via knockout, who we said, I can't see a decision happening here. Either he knocks him out or he doesn't win. And what happens? He knocks him out. Like, I mean, it's like we almost predicted the future. When you hit on things like that, do you ever just feel yourself a little bit? You're like, ooh, okay, man. Like, I, I saw it in writing. I saw poetry in motion, and it came to fruition. T talk to me, like, what you're thinking when you see the outcome. Yeah, man. No, you you hit the nail on the head, man. Especially from how technical that that first round was going. We were talking about it on the pre-show. Very technical fight from Muslim Solikov. Come back and the leech has absolute power, man. And that's exactly what it was. He set him up nice, leads that cry, uh, right cross over the top, ground strikes. It's one of those ones where you're watching it and you're talking. And I was, I was even doing this. Actually, I didn't get this one to, to stream until later on that night. But I was doing this with the Lauren Murphy fight, which we'll talk about later. All the stuff with, that we were talking about in the pre-show was being happening in the fight so yep. you do feel a little bit justified you, you you do saying all these things but then there's that little part of you that thinks well we were saying all this because this fighter is so good at in, in Muslim Solikov's case staying technical yeah. is he gonna win the decision oh shit like uh, then it happens and then the knockout happens and then you're justified and you feel excited about it so you do feel a little bit of a way man you're proud but there is all that little bit of worry because yeah. these fighters are very skilled yeah I mean for a second I was all like Leech isn't gonna be able to make this a dog fight like Solikov's gonna be too technical and all that stuff but yeah it ended up happening man so we'll just kind of finish up this last little recap with uh I mean, we told you guys we're going to do better on the props, and this was a tough one to do, man. For the Lemos, for an example, I picked TKO, AJ picked points, and of course, it's the one that's plus 1,200 submission out of nowhere, right? Like, who would have thought that? The Sumaderji TKO, AJ, you were you were seconds away from that TKO, to be completely fair with you. Um, I hit on the Burgos points, so that was easy money. Burgos points, Jingliang TKO. We didn't hit on anything else, man, so it's a little unfortunate, but uh, you hit on that Rodriguez TKO, and I feel like that was a little bit of a, a stroke of luck right there, if we do say so myself. So two and four for the props, three and three for the money line, and four and two for the over and unders. And with that being said, that is your props recap, your betting recap, your wagering recap. We're still cash money, brother. We're still cash money all day long. So tune into the Bloody Water Podcast to get your premier wagering analysis, your wagering info, your betting information, and everything that you need.